was a very excited five-year-old. I loved the outdoors, and I knew my dad was taking me on another adventure. We drove forever from our home in Silver Spring. <laughs> I knew that once we got there, I could run around in the wilderness. Yes, the wilderness, the beginning of the Germantown campus. Having worked at Montgomery College from its beginnings as a professor up through administrative vice president, my father, Irvin Schick, helped to plan the Germantown campus. My dad referred to this new place as G3, an acknowledgement that this was the third campus of the college. I have fond memories of our trips to survey the land, to watch the construction, and to marvel at the curious monstrosity, the WSSC water tower. <laughs> As a five-year-old, I had no idea that this land was about to have a beautiful new purpose, a new campus of Montgomery College where education can be accessed affordably and students are empowered to change their lives. At the groundbreaking ceremony in 1976, the groundbreakers, including my father, each got a shovel and dug into the wilderness dirt, symbolizing the start to a place where educational dreams would come true for even more students in Montgomery County. My dad held on to his shovel. When I was much older, I remember picking up the shovel to use in our yard. My dad called out to me, you know, that's a very special shovel. <laughs> My father spoke with pride, remembering the early beginnings of G3. Here, is his shovel. Here is the wilderness. <laughs> Welcome to the 40th anniversary of the Germantown campus at Montgomery College. Thank you so much, Carolyn. What a wonderful way to begin this event. And I want to thank all of you for coming today. Um, most of us, as human beings, try to ignore a 40th. We sort of pretend it's not going to happen. We stall at 39. Um, but as the campus, it's wonderful to celebrate 40, and we look forward to celebrating many more. Um, so I want to welcome you, and in particular, I want to give a shout out and welcome some very special guests. The Honorable uh, Senator Nancy King is with us, Delegate Charles Barkley, and if I may, happy birthday to you, sir. <laughs> From the Maryland Department of Education, James Dean. From the Office of the County Executive, Lily Chi. Montgomery County Economic Development Representative, Economic Development Corporation, um, Lynn Benzion is here, and uh, as is Nadia Khan. From WorkSource Montgomery, Ashante Abubakar. And from the Germantown Gaithersburg Chamber of Commerce, Marilyn Balcom. From the African American Chamber of Commerce, Janice Freeman, and from Biohealth Innovation, Rich Bendis and Judy Costello. BlackRock Arts Center, thank you, Iona Uche and Brad Watkins for joining us. MC Board of Trustees, I believe Dr. Les Levine is here or perhaps on his way, I haven't seen him yet. And from the MC Foundation Board, Jeffrey Slavin. Former MC President and Provost with his wonderful wife, Dr. Hercules Pinckney and Pat have joined us today and from the Montgomery County Historical Society, Matt Logan, and from the Germantown Historical Society, Susan Soderberg is here. Dr. Steve Kane, some of my, my esteemed colleagues, Dr. Steve Kane, Dr. Monica Brown, Dr. Sanjay Rai, Ms. Donna Shenna, Dr. Kim Kelly. It's quite an assemblage of people here. But truly exciting, we are joined by members of the inaugural class of 1978, yes, that's 19, and Carol and Dave Anthony have joined us today. We also have some former employees, including some charter employees, Dave Kiefer, Carol Allen, Diane Daniel will be here shortly for those who know her and will look forward to seeing her, Eleanor Diggs, Wilbur Hildebrand, Audrey, Audrey Hill, Ruth Henderson, Rita Shoemaker, Bill Soderberg, Ellen Terry, 
And Danny Brigham, although he could not join us today, he is the only charter employee still on the job. And he was very sorry that he had a prior commitment and could not attend today. And I read all those names because we are grateful that you've joined us today. And I think it's just significant who we have assembled to celebrate this 40th year. And so it is now my pleasure um, to introduce and welcome Dr. Steve Kane, acting president of Montgomery College, while Dr. Pollard is on sabbatical, focusing on the future. Dr. Kane is returning to where he began his career at the college to Germantown. Welcome back. Well, good afternoon, everybody. So good to see all of you here for this auspicious occasion. Uh, it's a wonderful opportunity to reconvene, remember, and, and celebrate. So uh, I want to thank you, Margaret, for that kind introduction. And it's, uh, I want to thank uh, Senator King for being here, uh, Delegate Barkley for being here, uh, and everyone who has uh, played a role in uh, leadership uh, regarding this campus and, and this community. Uh, when I was hired as a full-time faculty member at the college about 30 years ago, uh, it was here at the Germantown campus. In fact, uh, there were 12 of us hired in that year, and our arrival was a big change for the campus because we increased the size of the full-time faculty here by 25%. Uh, it was kind of small back in those days. When I arrived, there was a single faculty member teaching in most disciplines, and I was the second full-time faculty member in chemistry. Uh, those who had been here from the opening of the campus were the true pioneers uh, of education at Germantown. And I have to tell you, I was, had the pleasure of running into several of them uh, before the program today. Uh, and it was a thank you all for being here, and uh, great to see you again. Um, and I have to say that <clears throat> those individuals uh, were my role models when I arrived at the college. They, uh, they were the ones that I looked up to to understand what community college was. Uh, I knew a little bit. I had taught at a different community college as a part-timer, and I taught at Montgomery College as a part-timer, but now I was full-time, and I had a new responsibilities, and uh, they were magnificent, uh, all of them. And uh, they really instilled a value uh, for students, student success, and going the extra mile to do whatever needed to be done. Uh, and those are values that stuck with me for a very long time. And it put me in, in uh, uh, all kinds of trouble uh, getting to positions like this. Uh, so uh, I thank you for that. So for our younger students, uh, I'm sure that 40 years sounds like an eternity, uh, but for those of us with a few gray hairs, we know how quickly time passes. I have many fond memories of the campus, but so much has changed. Most of my classes were in the SA building, including many hours spent in the very large lab that was there. Uh, that building is now being renovated into a wonderful location for our student affairs and science. Uh, including a whole new floor on top. At the end of the spring semester, we used to have a chemistry department picnic and play softball where a parking lot now sits. And Dr. Harry Harden was an individual that uh, we worked with. He was a wonderful dean, uh, now memorialized in the Harry Harden Awards. And Dr. Stan Dahlman was the person we called provost when I first arrived. He was actually the campus's first provost, and being first comes with a lot of special responsibilities. He took great pride in assembling the first faculty members, many of them attracted from the other two campuses at the time, and advocated for the buildings that you see today. Stan's legacy was to set the standard for innovative leadership in Provost Noreen Line, Hercules Pinckney, who is also here today, Sanjay Rai, who is here, Margaret, and now Margaret Latimer, have all brought a deep commitment to academics and the community to their service. So of the three campuses, Germantown is actually the largest. It has the most space, and that space has allowed the college to grow for our students and for our community. In fact, there are buildings on the campus today that not, had not even been imagined back then. There was no plan for a hospital on the campus. 
And now we have the first one at any community college in the nation. There was certainly no cybersecurity lab. In fact, cybersecurity wasn't a discipline or a career. It probably wasn't even a word back then. And now it's one of our fastest growing fields at the college. Throughout all of this change, whether in faculty or facilities or disciplines, something about the campus's identity has stayed constant. The Germantown campus has always had one eye on the future. Whether it's the remarkable Bioscience Education Center building, the creation of the Pinckney Innovation Complex for Science and Technology, or as we like to call it, PICMC, the Cybersecurity Lab, or the Frank Islam Speaker Series, it has always had a vision for what is coming next. Just a couple of weeks ago, the campus was designated by the state as a RISE zone. If you don't know what that means, it stands for Regional Institution Strategic Enterprise Zone, which will help attract businesses and developers to the, pink, uh, to the PIC MC by offering tax incentives. These partners will in, tur in turn feed an ecosystem of, of entrepreneurship providing internship opportunities and jobs for our students. This is the kind of innovation that has always characterized this place and the people who have worked so hard to develop it. They have, consistent, uh, they have consistently thought, what will we need 10 years from now and 20 years from now? And then they work tirelessly to create it so that our students will be ready for that future. That's why today's theme, A Vision for the Future, could not be more appropriate. This campus was founded on creativity and enterprising ideas. In fact, what has brought us to this day and the resources and facilities you see around us is that creativity and enterprising spirit. For me, it's a personal pleasure to return here so many years later and celebrate this milestone with all of you. I imagine that in another 40 years from now, this campus would have grown even beyond what we've all expected. It may look different. We may not even re uh, recognize some of the disciplines being taught, but I'm certain that it will be serving students in ways that prepare them to be successful in their futures. So happy anniversary, Germantown, and thank you. The vision for the Germantown campus began in 1967. A groundbreaking ceremony was held in June of 1976, and in the fall of 1978, that long-held vision became a reality. On October 21, 1978, the campus was formally dedicated. We were known here on the Germantown campus as the Country Club at Montgomery College. Uh, and uh, of course, there was rural area all around campus. You would drive out the campus, try and see cows on the other side of the field. Uh, there was just the community used the the facilities here as the library and the and the pool at the time there because the uh, student enrollment wasn't as large as it is today here. And isn't it kind of funny? I'm working here now and you actually went to school here when it first opened? I mean, what made you decide to come to Germantown anyway? Oh, uh, that's a good question. <laughs> um, actually, my friend Kathleen, who you know, and Nancy, who I am actually still friends with today, um, approached me and I was going to Maryland University and they said, do you want to come to Germantown campus? We're thinking of, of going there. It's opening up, but it's going to be small. But um, I decided to go ahead and, and and come to Germantown campus, and I am so glad that I did. As first chancellor, Dr. Stanley Dahlman had a clear understanding of the growing impact of technology. He envisioned a technology center where students would gain hands-on experience using state-of-the-art computers and would graduate with the skills necessary to meet the rapidly increasing demand for a tech-savvy workforce. The cornerstone of Dr. Dahlman's vision was laid during Dr. Noreen Line's tenure as provost. And in 1996, the Germantown High Technology and Science Center was opened. So my role was to build on that uh, experience that I had in continuing education. 
because I had worked with many of these groups before, the High Technology Council, Chamber of Commerce, etc. So I needed to go out and meet them. More than 110 businesses contributed to the support of this building. What really makes the campus work and create a learning environment is that faculty and that staff committed to the students. If that's not there, the building doesn't work. It's the staff and faculty who make it work, and they actually contributed a considerable amount of money. It was a first at Montgomery College. They're on that wall, too. So the business people are on the wall, and the faculty and staff are on the wall. The Spectrum Lecture Series began. In 1999, Chautauqua was hosted on the campus for the first time. And in 2011, the Frank Islam Athenaeum Symposia took center stage in Globe Hall. When Dr. Hercules Pinckney became the provost of the campus, the community along the I-270 corridor was gaining national attention. Time Magazine ran a story, DNA Alley, about the bustling scientific mecca in our backyard. Dr. Pinckney's grand vision of a life sciences and technology park saw the community, the college, and industry working together to maximize opportunities. The vision for the campus became this notion of developing a synergistic environment in which biotechnology, education and training, uh, in the life sciences, entrepreneurship, as well as uh, economic development would all take place in this collaborative atmosphere. And to support that, um, the seat of the stool, if you will, uh, the vision, we had three legs. Uh, one leg was a brand new bioscience education center that would not only house all of our biotech programs and life sciences, but all of the sciences of the campus in one facility. But what made it unique, we all we went a step further and made sure that we had a space that would meet the qualifications or requirements of a baccalaureate degree, the upper two years of a baccalaureate degree with the notion that one day we'll be able to bring a university in to do the upper two years uh, in the life science and baccalaureate degree program. Dr. Sanjay Rai continued to develop the vision for the Hercules Pinckney Life Sciences Park. The college hosted groundbreaking ceremonies for the future Bioscience Education Center and Holy Cross Germantown Hospital, the anchor resident partner for the park. A few years later, both state-of-the-art facilities opened and significantly changed the skyline of the campus. Uh, let me tell you a little bit about Bioscience Education Center. This building has assets that prepare workforce for, for all life sciences, biotechnology uh, industries uh, in that region. Uh, after the building is completed, you will see that we are training scientists and, and others uh, who work in this industry. We have our students, our high school students, middle school students coming to the campus, learning about life sciences, learning about opportunities in life sciences. Holy Cross Hospital, uh, is, is the first hospital and so far the only hospital on uh, campus of a community college. And our partnership with Holy Cross Hospital gives us opportunity to train more health, sci health uh, science workers, more nurses, more allied health, and all wonderful partnership and wonderful opportunities that comes for the students and faculty. Both wonderful pro uh, projects, wonderful uh, opportunities for our students, and I consider myself very fortunate that I had uh, a small role to play in those two projects. Became the vice president and provost, cybersecurity was front and center. The college was awarded the lead on a $15 million tax grant. CPAM was created, a cybersecurity center was added to the Germantown campus, and the college continued to connect with industry through the Pinckney Innovation Complex or pick MC. Obviously, you know, being next to the college, the, you know, Hughes and the college are neighbors. They've been neighbors. They've been, we've had a very good working relationship throughout the years. And um, Montgomery College in Germantown has been here 40 years. Hughes has been here about 38 years. So we both arrived in, in Germantown uh, at the same time. Um, they've consistently through that time reached out to Hughes, uh, 
regarding any needs that we would have in, uh, in establishing a relationship. I've happened to serve on the, on the board of the Gaithersburg Germantown Chamber with Herc Pinckney for many years. I was a classmate in my, uh, Leadership Montgomery with Charlene Nunley. So that relationship with Hughes ha has built over the years. And, and over the last five years, I've been a part of uh, Pick MC, which is located on the Germantown campus, which is the Pinckney Innovation Complex for Science and Technology. And the objective there is to bring business, to bring, uh, it's an integrated campus where business, uh, technology, and bio uh, are going to be brought together for the benefit of businesses in the county, but also the students and the college itself. Your changes. The underlying tenor of the Germantown campus has remained the same. I think that the things that have not changed is the people. The people are still friendly. Uh, the students are still good. Uh, uh, friendly to the staff and faculty. It seems more like a family atmosphere here at uh, Germantown. Has envisioned a future that integrates the arts and humanities science, technology, industry, and community. We strive to enable our students to envision their future and chart a course to make it their reality. Perhaps the program also should have said it's a family reunion um, thank you to the MCT folks and all who had a, a role in putting that together, the memories, the images. Um, it's humbling to stand here before you, um, especially after watching that video with Dr. Pinckney, with Dr. Rye um, in the audience here. I knew I had large shoes to fill and was standing on the shoulders of giants when I stepped into this position. The Germantown campus was born with an eye on the future, as Dr. Kane noted, and under the leadership of the people from whom you have just heard, it has never blinked. The work that we are doing now is a continuation of what was started to ensure the future of a thriving Montgomery County in which our students are prepared to contribute to and benefit from the prosperity that is a hallmark of the region. You have just enjoyed the video showing how this campus has changed. The Greek philosopher, Heraclitus said, change alone is unchanging, but I think even he would be surprised today. The rate of change of almost everything is rapid, exponential. It's exhilarating, exhausting, challenging, and exciting to envision the future of the campus of the Pinckney Innovation Complex for Science and Technology at Montgomery College, PICMC. I started at Montgomery College more than 20 years ago as an adjunct faculty member in the math department. Calculators were not new, but their inclusion in the classroom, their use as a pedagogical tool was. Many faculty considered the calculator a heretical device destined to destroy the understanding and appreciation of pure mathematics. The debate raged. And it wasn't too many years later that a similar debate raged about the use of cell phones. Today, technology has and is transforming what we teach and how and what students learn. The following is a quote from a Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences. In a world awash in technology, the line between humans and machines has begun to blur, our thoughts and actions increasingly shaped and substantiated by machines. Perhaps nowhere is the blurring more evident than in a scientific endeavor called neural interfacing, a term for technology aimed at bridging the workings of machines and the human brain. Brain-machine interfaces operate at the nexus of thought and action using the brain's electrical signals to maneuver external devices. And recently, two well-known and successful entrepreneurs, Elon Musk and Brian Johnson, announced new startups that seek to enhance human capabilities through the brain-computer interface. They envision a time when we may be able to operate a car or a spacecraft with our thoughts or upload our brains to computers. AI, artificial intelligence, VR, virtual reality, and AR, augmented reality, are transforming the way we access information and learn in ways that no one imagined just a few years ago. And because of this, some analysts are predicting the end of higher education. They're writing the obituary as we meet here today. 
It seems ironic in some ways that this should happen at a time when access to information has never been greater and learning can be so incredibly engaging and interactive. But maybe there is no irony. In addition to learning being engaging and interactive, it can be independent of time and place. But I think the reports of the death of higher education are premature. Learning, absorbing information, does not equate to acquiring the ability to apply that information or knowledge. It does not equate to wisdom or develop communication skills. It does not prepare you to work collegially on a team or contribute to the solution of a wicked problem. It does not give you hands-on experiential learning. So how do we teach for this future? What do we teach? This is the challenge as we envision our future. This celebration of 40 years gives us an opportunity to reflect on where we have been, what we have done, and envision a future that builds on a heritage of imagining and creating the future. Coincidentally, our celebration intersects with the college's crafting of the 2020, excuse me, 2025 strategic plan. There are rich discussions and difficult decisions being made here and on campuses across the country. The nature of work and the workplace are changing. Students are changing. Funding streams are changing, and student streams are changing. Our understanding of learning is changing. The boundaries of education are changing. Things like AP and IB programs, now generations old, blurred those boundaries, but now dual enrollment, middle and early college, career changers and adult learners are erasing boundaries. In the fall of 2019, Germantown will host the early college program in computer science, and no surprise, cybersecurity. Thanks to a $15 million Department of Labor grant, adult career changers who took advantage of a new pathway are at work today in one of the fastest growing and most critical industries, cybersecurity. Students today have an amazing smorgasbord from which to choose, and new choices are constantly on the horizon. Data science, data analytics, bioinformatics, AI, VR, translational sciences, cloud computing, and we've heard cybersecurity. I don't know if advisors are talking to students about the opportunities for a developer evangelist. Raise your hand if you know what a developer evangelist is. Oh good, I don't feel so badly now. I just recently learned, these, this is a real job, Google it. That, that's in the vocabulary too. These are people, they're translators, they are interpreters from tech speak to the language that a client or customer or student or a team member can understand. We hear quite a lot about the need for people with communication skills, critical thinking skills, and problem solving skills. We also hear about the need for people who are agile, who can continuously acquire new knowledge and skills and adapt. How do we teach this? The Germantown campus, PICMC, is well positioned to inspire and host a new vision of higher ed, of lifelong learning to meet the next gen challenges. Maybe we need to call it a learning and talent development institution. My vision for PICMC is a place where strong connections to the businesses that will be hiring our students help us to ensure that we are creating job-ready individuals with specific skills and knowledge, but also agile minds prepared to do the critical thinking and problem solving necessary for success and growth of the individual and of businesses of the county and the state. I envision a campus where those with a need and desire to learn are connected with those who can parse that puzzle or guide the exploration to unravel a mystery. Not so radical, isn't that what we do now? It is, but what will be radical is how we engage technology to assist in that task, to be cutting edge, to be bleeding edge, creating time and freeing resources, always finite, for those activities that are best done face to face. And what if the CEO or CFO of a company in a shared building on the other side of parking lot four there met with students to offer a master class or to dissect a case study? What if those students are different majors, different schools, and already work full time but in a dynamic field in which knowledge and skill acquisition is ongoing? We have taken first steps thanks to those who came before me. A researcher from the GIC gave a lecture here in Globe Hall. A half a dozen small biotech companies have access to state-of-the-art equipment in the Bioscience Education Center to grow those companies here in Montgomery County as we train their future employees right alongside. And those clustered, regularly interspaced, short palindromic repeats that you read about and saw on your newsfeed or iPhone, CRISPR, yes, we do that too. So what's next? I envision a welcoming and inclusive campus where some take their first step as, other, as others reach a summit, 
and both returned to scale another summit at another time, lifelong learners developing their talent. What we think of as an academic schedule today will be a relic. I see a thriving class with world-class labs and tech space. In addition to our outstanding PICMC partners and neighbors, Holy Cross Germantown Hospital and Hughes, I envision new businesses in new spaces shared with the college. Senator King and Delegate Barkley, we may need your help to change some regulations and things to make that possible. I see collisions, students starting out, returning for post-bac or post-doc training, having formal and informal interactions with people working in businesses on campus in the PICMC. We will be the go-to campus for talent needed by Montgomery County's growing business community because we will be agile and responsive. We will build on the Frank Islam Athenaeum Lecture Series, Humanities Days, the Art Walk, and the Renaissance Scholars Program to provide a rich and intellectually stimulating space where curiosity and discovery thrive. We will leverage the incredible diversity of the community to find our commonality. I hear lunchtime concerts in that beautiful slope behind us. Maybe there's a coffee shop owned by a Montgomery County business or a locally owned restaurant or two. Excellence attracts excellence. There is coopetition, healthy competition complemented by cooperation to achieve common goals. We will eliminate the boundaries and develop strong bonds. The future is bright for higher education, for Germantown, Pick MC, for the college, for the county. And our gift to the future is our students who will work and lead the county tomorrow. Thank you for joining us today to celebrate the past as we look ahead. I would now like to invite Senator Nancy King to the stage, and I would like to ask Delegate Barclay, uh, Dr. Kane. Did Dr. Levine make it to, I, I've not seen our trustee. All right, if he is here, please come down. Um, and past provost, please, Dr. Pinckney, Dr. Rye, if you would join us for the presentation of the proclamation. Thank you. I have to say a few words, if you don't mind. Sure. They don't ever put a microphone in front of a, a <laughs> politician without have, getting some kind of remarks. I just want to say, you know, I've lived in this community. We moved to Montgomery Village in 1980. And this, it wasn't much around here for the, the college, but I've watched it grow over the years. I've had children of my own that have gone here to school, and it's just such a large part of our community that I'm, I'm just so proud of it. When I'm in Annapolis and I'm talking to educators from across the state, I am always so proud of Montgomery College as a whole. Um, Last week, I, I went and did a, a tour over at the University of Maryland uh, Baltimore campus with uh, Freeman Hrabowski, and he tells me that they get most of their best students transferring from Montgomery College. I think that says a lot. <laughs> and none of you are ever shy about coming to ask me for things in Annapolis. <laughs> So you know if we can help you in any way, um, this is what, this college is what is providing our, our business community with a lot of the talent that they're expecting and, and deserving. So um, anything that I can do to help, I'm absolutely happy to be there. Now, I can't read that thing from here, but if, <laughs> if you want to hand it to me, I'd like to read this proclamation and then present it. The Maryland General Assembly official citation, be it hereby known to all that sincerest congratulations are offered to Montgomery College Germantown campus in recognition of the occasion of its 40th anniversary and for exemplary commitment and dedication to providing quality higher education in Montgomery County presented on this 16th day of October 2018 on behalf of the Montgomery County delegation uh, myself, uh, Nancy King, as the Senate Chair, and David Frazier Hidalgo as the House Chair. Congratulations. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yes.
you. Thank you. Now, I believe, have another video preview. Today, we proudly mark the 40th anniversary of the Germantown campus. For our milestone birthday, we have decided to give ourselves and each other 40 days of kindness, 40 days of intentional acts that will encourage, support, or provide for someone. We recognize how fortunate we are to work and go to school on a campus where kindness is an underlying norm. But for the next 40 days, we are challenging ourselves to take it to the next level. We have provided you with a calendar filled with suggestions of things you can do on any given day to demonstrate kindness. We encourage you to hang this in your work area or put it in a place you will see daily to remind you of this kindness challenge. To capture and share our kindness, we will be tracking progress on a globe displayed in the library. We are asking each of you to write down a kind act that you perform on a paper person, which will be put on the globe. At the end of the 40 days, we hope to see a world that is filled with kindness. We will bring the globe filled with all of these acts of kindness to the end of your campus celebration so that we can marvel at the many ways we gave and receive kindness during this 40-day challenge. You will find brief instructions, paper people, and boxes to put them in in every building. Kindnesses that are placed in the box will be added to the globe. You may submit as many as you wish. We have also created an online submission option so that employees and students college-wide can participate. Just go to tinyurl.com slash germantown40x and enter your kindness. Someone on the committee will write your act on a person and place it on the globe for you. We thank you ahead of time for participating. If you have any questions, please see someone from the kindness committee in the lobby following the program. They are the individuals with the kindness name tag. In a world where you can be anything, be kind. As we close, um, and I invite you to join us for a cake reception, like the Academy Award, Awards, only better, there are some people I would like to thank. Tanya Baker, Nicole Given, Brittany Green were the inspiration for this day, and their phenomenal work is what has made this day happen. The Kindness Committee, uh, Joan Lefevre, Meta Lash, Amanda Stroud, Mary Robinson, um, the Communications, Krista Hansen, Jill Fitzgerald, Mike Stajanovic, Pardon me if I um, massacred your name, Mike. Um, Stephanie Krasnoff, again, just incredible effort, the videos and that sort of thing. MCTV, Stan Jones and his team, um, huge thank you to you. Media resources, public safety facilities, catering, it really is a huge team effort here. Um, there were committees who worked on the program, the VIP escorts, cake cutting giveaways. Um, it took more than a village. It took the entire campus to bring this together. And I just, a huge shout out and thank you to all of you. I also want to thank the many people who submitted photos for the PowerPoint uh, that was showing as the program started, and we'll play it again as people leave. And in addition to the Kindness Globe, the library will have a display of the items that many of you shared from years gone by. So thank you for contributing to, to this ongoing celebration. Also, please come back Thursday evening um, here in Globe Hall you see pianos here, there will be a special performance of Mazorgsky's pictures at an exhibition. Our wonderful faculty member, uh, pianist William Chang, and a colleague, Ellen Sue, will perform the piece for dueling pianos, while interpretive artwork prepared by, a facu by faculty member David Carter will be on the screen behind us. So bring your neighbors, bring your friends, bring budding pianists in the community to be inspired. And now, again, thank you for coming. Um, please join us for a cake reception um, out in the atrium and the great company. And when you leave, we have a small token of the day for you to take with you. Thank you and happy anniversary, Germantown. Thank you.